Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining me back into Ostrov. My name is Axfield and with today's video, we're going to finally get to do the pottery. So yeah, we're on the 10th episode now and uh, I've been a little bit busy offline. I'm going to explain all of that to you just now, what I did off screen. Uh, so you can see here, I'm currently busy setting up the pottery building. So we're going to do that. I'm going to just fast forward that while I speak to you guys. But if you are new to this channel and you like city builders builders or survival games and crafting games then please do remember to press the like and subscribe as well as the bell notification to stay updated but uh, so what i did off screen i actually built this bridge additionally because i felt like uh, the people were struggling to get from point a to b between the two regions here and also i built the cart shed here now what i've noticed is that the cart shed is 10 times more effective uh, than the cart parking I never knew that before but uh, in any case so uh, that's what I did I built the card sheet here and now I don't seem to have any more problems uh, with the charcoal anymore so since I've built the card sheet here now things seems to be running smoothly so I think that's gonna be a thing of the past <laughs> where I struggle with the bricks you can see there's constantly charcoal being burned now at this stage so yeah I don't think that's gonna be a problem anymore I would also like to ta thank Joe Noip for giving me the recommendation that I cap my labor force on each production building. So the idea is to just take the laborer limit down from 20 to let's say 4 or 5. So I've done that pretty much with all my production buildings. So I think all in all I think everything's going to run much more th smooth from this stage on. Alright but we're currently busy here with the pottery building. I need another additional 1,300 bricks, but uh, at least that is going now a little bit better than before. So we can see there are bricks burning there, there's the next batch being dried. So yeah, it's, it's going pretty smooth. So then I should be able to get my next row house up pretty soon, I think. So yeah, I'm pretty stoked about that. But my main idea now is to get the pottery building up, and once I've got that, I want to want to also get the soap works up and going so let's just see where is the soap works here we go all right so and my idea is to build the soap works uh, right next to uh, the pottery here so we've got all the the burning buildings together so to speak but uh it it seems suitable to just place it here so i'm going to do that in any case so let's just square it up here uh yeah i'm gonna just go with that that should be fine cool right so before i start with the soap works i also want to build an additional bridge here because i am going to expand my farmland towards this side and then of course also towards this side but uh, i think maybe i should start by first building a farmhouse on this side because it's going to be easier access for my villagers on that side so yeah my suggestion is although the cart shed is much bigger than the cart parking you've got specific assigned uh, villagers for the cart shed so these guys at any given time they will take the carts and they will head out now for example where you've got the cart parking you need to physically uh, or you need to allocate laborers to to move the carts around while these guys are called carters and they that's what they do the whole day every day they are just pushing the carts around so it's definitely worthwhile to have these guys around so in any case with my charcoal pile it's definitely looking better uh, you can see now both of the charcoal piles are burning oh well I've got charcoal on this side this one's burning so yeah that's really really cool so I can even consider selling to their Kachi again that's uh, usually my go-to at the beginning of the game is to sell charcoal because you can sell heaps of it and make quite a lot of money but um, also with that in mind my money is looking pretty good at this stage standing at 4800 coin I purchased quite a lot of stuff in between so I think I'm doing pretty well if I take in consideration all the purchases that I've made but uh, yeah the pottery is moving along pretty well we've got another 300 bricks that we need there and um, but we've got all the charcoal that we do need for the burning so that's gonna be fine I think while we wait for the pottery building let's maybe set up another row house now my idea is, is to not, I want to make a square or like a rectangle of row houses here but I don't want it to be too big so I'm still contemplating if I want to 
make two blocks down uh, in the width. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm going to just maybe do the single one and then do a small space in the middle. I think let's maybe go with that. Oh, of course, and now I need to buy the glaze from Barvin Cove. Hmm. Interesting. I do need some lime as well. So let's maybe buy 800 lime. Need quite a bit. And uh, with the glaze, I'm not sure how much I'm going to need. Uh, let's go with 2000. It's quite pricey, but uh, in any case, I'm going to go with that. And uh, just let's just see if we've got the workers here. Okay, cool. We do have workers. And uh, I still need... Uh, I did cap the labor force here. Yeah. Okay, cool. I thought I didn't. Alrighty. So now what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to have to place another warehouse here. Because I need an, an, an additional space here for the glaze. As maybe as well as for the pottery and the glassware to place that in. So let's just see uh, where we can squeeze this warehouse in. That's maybe another bad idea to squeeze it in here. You can actually do two back to back maybe. Yeah, I think that's going to look pretty nice. We can add a few more trees here just to suit it up a little bit. But let's do that. I'm going to just place the warehouse there. So I'm going to move the warehouse all the way to the front, right off the pottery. Okay, I can see they're already starting the construction here. How far is my bricks going? Oh, my word. Come on, guys. Just take the charcoal already. My goodness. Okay, there they go. Okay, we're going to wait for the bricks still for some time. So let's go ahead and first build the warehouse. And uh, then what we can do is once the glaze comes, we can just slot it into the new warehouse immediately. But you can see the town's looking pretty colorful at this stage. Uh, just planting trees at random all around the city. I found it's best to just do a whole mixture of trees. It definitely looks more natural. And uh, it just looks prettier to be honest. So I'm just doing a whole mix of trees all around the city. As you can see. We're still busy here with the barber surgery. I need another 3,600 bricks. So I'm just leaving that on the back burner for now. But uh, all in all, the town's looking very well. Um, we've got 160 people now in the town. So that's a pretty decent size. I think the most that I've had my town in Ostrov before was maybe, I think, between 800 and 900 people uh, in the town. Uh, I think I was just under a thousand if I'm not mistaken. So, but I had quite a few row houses up. But it's a pretty big dilemma. And once you once you start building a whole bunch of row houses, you need to ensure that all of the people have got works. Because now with these farmhouses, they do make quite a decent amount of money just by selling the crops. But you obviously don't get that with the row houses. So you can see we've got the sailboats coming here from Barvin Cove to drop off the glaze as well as the limestone. Uh, we don't need any additional lime. Oh, actually we do. Another 17. So that's why they can't finish that construction. That's a good thing I did buy it from Barvin Cove now. So that's going to sort that problem out in any case. Okay, perfect. Love to see that the bricks are going so well. And we've always got charcoal burning, so yeah, loving it, loving it. Okay, and our warehouse is up and ready to go. So let's just go ahead and assign a worker. And I'm going to just say carter, laborer, all that stuff. And uh, we're going to assign the glaze. Um, come on, where's my glaze? Here we go. Okay, so we've got the limestone and there the glaze is being unloaded. So now I can select the glaze. And I'm going to just go ahead and let's maybe do 2500 for the glaze. 
and uh, then I'm gonna need to slot in you know I actually want to slot in the tallow here so I've been having a problem with the tallow don't have storage for that so you can see here with my my butchery I'm pretty saturated here with the tallow at this stage until I've got the soap works up and running the tallow is going to be a problem but uh, yeah we're gonna sort that out now Still haven't capped the labor limit here, but that's fine. Got that sorted out now. Okay, cool. So the pottery building's almost up and done. It's looking really nice here with this pottery burner. So this is going to be the first time that I'm going to play with the pottery and working the mechanics around the pottery so I've got no idea what else additionally to the glaze that I need I mean, obviously clay and water I suppose but uh, and I suppose maybe firewood or charcoal one of the two that would make sense I'm gonna move my soap works right off the pottery so I think then we can just start creating some soap for the folks as well. You know, once they start buying some more luxury items, then I might have to change my income ratios a little bit. I'll have to pay the people a little bit more because they spend a lot of money on buying luxury items and they don't really regulate that. So even if they've got little money, they'll still forcibly buy the luxury items. So... I might need to be forced to increase their salaries because they're going to just start buying more luxury items and they do require that I think after you reach a certain population they will ask a few for soap and some more luxury items I know that is a thing so yeah I might need to be forced to to increase the salaries all around just really nice to look at it, how it all comes together okay perfect right so we've got the pottery let's maybe assign two workers I'm gonna do my laborers and my workers okay so I was right about that um, although not for the water they definitely need clay glaze and firewood okay that's a given uh, but not the water and we're going to also cap the labor limit here to five. And yeah, I think let's just work with two workers for now. Cool. All right, so we're going to start producing the pottery uh, the, or the earthenware as they call it. And uh, then it will automatically be slotted in here with the market stall. So the people will immediately start buying the pottery. It's a pretty straightforward production, to be honest. Firewood is relatively easy to, to produce, so... Okay, we've already got a hundred earthenware and uh, now that will of course go to the market store and uh, I think what we can do is maybe just open up a space here um, within the warehouse I'm gonna maybe just also say 2500 and uh, then once we've got the soap production up and running we can also move the soap in there and um, I'm gonna also tell my glassworks to start producing some glassware because we've got plenty of windows at this stage so yeah, I think we can start doing that. So let's do maybe up to 200 glassware. And I'm gonna, I still need to cap the laborers here, laborers. Right. And the glassware we can also move in here. All right, so we've got uh, the people, a messenger from Pinotine. And let's just go ahead and sell some sunflower oil as well as apples. I've got so much apples, man. I think I need to increase my sale, yeah. Okay, 
Okay, let's maybe assign a little bit more apples here. I think I'm going to just go with 1,000 maybe. I've got five over 5,000 apples in storage, so yeah, I've got to get rid of it somewhere. And the best way, of course, is to just trade with it. I had no idea the orchards was going to produce that much. just want to see how the brickworks are going. Alright, so... Currently all the bricks are being used here for the soap works. I was hoping I've got a little bit of access bricks so that we can immediately start with the barber surgery. So here's a nice decorative item we can also place here within the center of the town. I think it might be appropriate to place it kind of like here. I think that would look really nice if we just kind of like squeeze it in here. In front of the town hall this will be like a monument. So let's just maybe squeeze it in here. We can also put that on a back burner. But it will definitely look nice once that's built. But you can see here, even with me limiting now my labor force, they're doing pretty good with the harvesting. So I'm taking up to 5 laborers additionally. But we're still within the first month of, month of harvesting and we've already pretty much done more than half of it. So yeah, I think we've got a good momentum going here. Looks like I'm gonna have to help them on again here with the with the charcoal. So let's just go ahead and send someone here to Balaglia just to get some additional charcoal to move this whole process on. Okay, so while we wait for that additional 800 bricks, I'm gonna just move the bridge ahead in the production. Uh, how can I say the the, the queue here? So they can rather just finish the bridge first until we've got that additional uh, bricks there. I suppose I can also do maybe some additional pavement here. Got so much stone, so. Alrighty, we've got our messenger from Balaklia. Wow, they offer way more chocolate at this stage. <laughs> I'm gonna just maybe go for it, just buy all of the charcoal. 8,600, why not? Alright, so let's just go ahead and add some more of the stone pavement. I'm telling you, the sunflower oil is by far the best thing to trade with. Everybody buys it and you get a really decent amount of money for that. Okay, perfect. Telling you it's quite tricky to get this pavement right. Yeah, we're gonna just have to do it like that. I'll fill in all the little small spots in between on a later stage. That's some fine work we need for later. Oh my goodness, 
I've got, got a shortage of firewood. Alright, <laughs> well, let's just assi assign some two extra lumberjacks here. So that we can just sort out the firewood, especially before winter time. And that's a pretty big thing. Oh my word, it's getting out of hand here. Yeah. <laughs> I've been so focused on filling up the charcoal piles now. Alright, I'm going to sort the firewood out now. It's going pretty crazy. But I've assigned both of the, the lumberjack or the forestries now to just do firewood. Just for a while. Just to sort the suppliers out. Okay, come on guys, bring me that firewood. <laughs> Damn, I'm gonna just have to sign more workers now, just to make up for this firewood. Okay, there we go. We're gonna sort it out now. Woo! That's a close call. You see, they can't go without firewood for very long, and especially over the winter time. If they run out of firewood, they will get very upset, so... We've gotta sort this problem out pretty soon. See, there we've already got a family moving out. Oh my word. This is not good. <laughs> So yeah, okay, so that's something to keep in mind. <laughs> don't pull too many things and don't fill your charcoal piles up too much with the firewood, unless you've got enough foresters. Okay, it does seem like the wood problem is subsiding a little bit actually I had two families moving out now at this stage oh what what a mission <laughs> Okay, but I'm pretty confident I'm going to sort this problem out quickly. I did get a little bit preoccupied with all the building and everything else. Alright, let's do this. You see, so if a family does move out, you do get people that will quickly move back in. So, well, that's the advantage. So now we've had three families moving out. 
think I'm going to have a little bit of a shortage of workers for some time. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease my builder limit. Just until we get the people to move back into the houses. And uh, also I think I need to maybe keep... As a standard I need to keep the four lumberjacks here now. Yeah, I think I'm going to need that additional workers there. Uh, yeah, well, so there you can see a new family is setting in already. So they move in pretty quickly. And that is, of course, if you did sort out the firewood problem, which I'm still kind of like figuring out or getting right here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to maybe assign the five lumberjacks here. I think we're going to need it for the current population that I've got. So I've altogether only lost four villagers in my town. So it's not too bad. With the new people that came in already, that means that I didn't lose that much. Just need these guys to get their firewood. Come on, guys. Bring me my firewood. Okay, cool. So at least our bridge is done pretty much here. Alright, so I'm going to just finish off here with the soap works. I require an additional 13,000 wood. So now I've got the five lumberjacks, so I obviously won't make that mistake again. Right, and I've got now already, let's see, uh, I've got 1,200 bricks, and there's another batch being burned, so, yeah, I think I must maybe line up the Barbasid Reef next, after the soap works. Okay, great. So of my total population, I've only got 94 people that can work. So, yeah, I'm hoping that some of the children will grow up just to boost it a little bit more. Okay, I only needed another additional 10 wood. So that's pretty much at the end of it. So they're just going to set up the building and then from there we can start with the barber surgery. So we've got 2000 bricks here currently in storage. And I need three and a half. So yeah, we're going to need just maybe two batches, I think, and then we can get the barber surgery also done. I'm going to go ahead and also add one additional builder. We did kind of like regain our population. Kind of, but not completely.
But yeah, things are going much smoother now at this stage. I think I must just keep the five lumberjacks. That was my problem. So we're obviously using way more firewood at this stage. But yeah, you can see uh, these lumberjacks, man, they've been dropping like crazy. This space is like completely open now. That's really funny. They've been working their butts off. Yeah, so we're just waiting for the soap works and there's a batch drying. So we've got 3000, then we only need another 500 bricks. And then we've got a barber surgery also set up. Finally. Uh, so what's nice here about this little setup that I've got here for the soap works, I've got the ashery here, uh, so uh, a lot of the ingredients they need comes from the ashery and then they can just go into the storage on this side. Should have probably moved a little bit closer but then they can go fetch the tallow from there. And uh, yeah, so I think it's going to be a pretty, uh, how can I say, they can work pretty effectively just with the current setup. And uh, then I'm also going to squeeze in the soap, maybe here in the last slot. Uh, yeah, okay, I've got to first produce my soap before I can slot it in. This is here. Okay. I've got a slot there for the soap. And uh, I've been having this lady that's been struggling financially. Because it's the same house, you can see her husband passed away. So it's a little bit of a mission for her to keep, uh, you know, everything running smoothly with the two children. So I do bail her out. It's the only house that I struggle with. So I don't mind that. I mean, she's a single mother looking after two children. So you got to help her out. All right. So let's just assign all the laborers here. And... Uh, Let's cap it to five, and I'm going to maybe assign two workers. There we go. Perfect. Now, see, I've got another person that passed away at 93, which is a very good age. I think especially in that year. But, um... The town's been running now for 12 years and I've only had four casualties. So there's two graves there. And then here by the cemetery on this side, I've got another two graves. Yeah. So that means I've only lost four people in 12 years. I think that's pretty, pretty good. <laughs> Livestock feed is low. Oh, well, that's not good. Oh, where's all my laborers? Oh, they should bring the additional hay. I think ideally I should put up some more drying racks. Uh, so let's just maybe do another one over here. Thank you. 
Okay, so I think they're transporting now the last amount of bricks here for the barber surgery. And uh, I think I'm going to just end off with that for this episode. So we can just get that done and dust it finally. <laughs> And here we've got our first soap produced now, so I'm going to just go ahead and open up a slot here for the soap. Yeah, so the same my feed is on the low side, but um, they're going to be grazing here, I think, for at least another 7-8 months. So I think that's fine. I just, maybe what I need to do is get some additional laborers to just fill up the drying racks here uh, within the next few months. I think that's pretty important. Uh, let's just do one more trade here with the Rikachi. Okay, perfect. Alright, so we got the last of the resources now to just finish up with the barber surgery. So I'm just putting this on fast forward. Alrighty, and we've got the barber surgery up and running. So we, the barber surgery will also invite new civilians or villagers to join here. So you can't assign the barber surgery. So they like a family that will run this shop over here. But they do bring good money in, like I said in the previous episode. So it's worthwhile to get that up and running. And uh, you kind of want to find a central point in your town to get that uh the barber surgery up so my idea is to keep one barber surgery on this side and then also here where i'm going to have all my row houses i'm going to also set up a barber surgery on that side but in any case guys that's it for me for today's episode thank you so much for watching and i'm going to see you in the next one Bye bye